Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me today. Now, our theme for this week has been I Love My Mom. And today we are going to focus on another Bible story that explains the amazing relationship between mother and child and how it parallels the relationship between God and us. And to do that, we're going to look at a Bible story. But before we do that, let's go over our memory verse. You ready? Okay. Remember your father's command and don't forget your mother's teaching. Remember their words always. Tie them around your neck and keep them over your heart. Proverbs 6, verse 20 and 21. Let's do it one more time. Remember your father's command and don't forget your mother's teaching. Remember their words always. Tie them around your neck and keep them over your heart. Proverbs 6, verse 20 and 21. Now remember, try to find little opportunities this week, every day if you can, to do something small to show your mom how much you love her and appreciate her. Because I'm telling you, it will go a long way. It will make her happier. It will bring her joy. It will just, you will see the peace come over her because she knows she is loved and cared for by you. Now, on to our Bible story. Our Bible story today holds a special place in my heart because it is where my name comes from. If you don't know the story of Leah, it is a part of Jacob's story because Leah was one of his wives. Now, Leah doesn't get the best reputation. Uh, she isn't the most beautiful woman in the Bible, but she does play an important role as a mother, and that is what we're going to talk about. So, before we start, get nice and comfy. And if you have your own Bible, I am reading from the Jesus Storybook Bible, but if you want to read from your Bible, you are welcome to read along with me. The story of Jacob and Leah is in Genesis chapter 29 and 30. So get your own Bible and read along with me, or you can listen as I read it to you. Here we go. The girl no one wanted. The story of Jacob, Rachel, and Leah. There were once two sisters. The youngest sister was very beautiful and her name was Rachel. But the oldest sister wasn't beautiful at all. Some thought her quite ugly, and her name was Leah. Rachel was the kind of girl who always gets invited to parties and chosen for the team. Everyone loved her. And poor Leah? No one hardly even noticed her. One day, their cousin Jacob came to stay. He was one of Isaac's sons, and he was on the run. Jacob had stolen and cheated and made some enemies, including his own brother, and now he was hiding. The funny thing is, Jacob, of all people, was the one God gave the special promise to. I will, oh, the same promise he had given his grandfather Abraham. I will rescue the world through your family. We read about that on Tuesday, God's promise to Abraham. But then God chooses people we at least expect. So, we'll see. Jacob stayed a long time working for his uncle Laban. One day, Laban said, Jacob, I've decided to pay you for your work. What do you want? A sudden thought struck him. How about one of my daughters? There's Rachel, and there's poor Leah, and there she is running after the sheep. Jacob looked at Rachel and he looked at Leah. Who would he choose? Of course, he chose Rachel. I'll work seven years for free, Jacob said, if I can marry Rachel. So Jacob worked seven years, and at last, his wedding day arrived. But that night, Laban played a nasty trick on Jacob. Instead of sending Rachel to marry Jacob, he sent Leah. Now, in those days, they didn't have electricity, so it was dark in their tent. And besides, women wore veils, and you couldn't see their faces properly. So Jacob su suspected nothing. The next morning, Jacob woke up and screamed. His new wife was lying beside him, but it wasn't Rachel. It was Leah. Jacob jumped out of bed. Laban, he cried, you scoundrel. But Laban said, work for me another seven years, and then you can marry Rachel. So Jacob worked for Laban another seven years, and at last, Rachel became his wife. Now Jacob had two wives, but of his two wives, Jacob loved Rachel the best. Can you even tell which one is 
Rachel, which one's Leah? It's hard to tell with those veils on. Hence, the face. No one loves me, Leah said. I'm too ugly. But God didn't think she was ugly. And when he saw that Leah was not loved and that no one wanted her, God chose her to love her specially, to give her a very important job. One day, God was going to rescue the whole world through Leah's family. Now when Leah knew that God loved her in her heart, suddenly it didn't matter anymore whether her husband loved her best or if she was the prettiest. Someone had chosen her. Someone did love her with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking always and forever love. So when Leah had a baby boy, she called him Judah, which means this time I will praise the Lord. And that's just what she did. And you'll never guess what job God gave Leah. You see, when God looked at Leah, he saw a princess. And sure enough, that's exactly what she became. One of Leah's children's children's children would be a prince, the prince of heaven, God's son. This prince would love God's people. They wouldn't need to be beautiful for him to love them. He would love them with all of his heart. And they would be beautiful because he loved them, like Leah. Like I said, the story of my namesake is not a glamorous one. When you think about the name Leah, it doesn't bring up beautiful pictures, glamour shots. It brings up a very humble young woman who may have not been the best to look at, but whose heart was pure. And that's what God saw. Even though Jacob didn't, and that's okay. He was faithful to her. Um, didn't love her as much as he loved Rachel, but he was a husband to her. And God filled in the rest of the gaps that she had in her heart with his love. And that allowed her to see the bigger picture in her life, which wasn't that she needed to be hopelessly in love with her husband, but that she was given the gift of being a mother. And when that happened, and when she realized that God's love could fill any hole, and that this love of this child could give her a purpose, all of the sadness, all of the jealousy that was probably in her heart was gone. Because she had a purpose now. She had a role to play in God's plan. And that was everything to her. I love the way this version tells her story because growing up, the NIV version just doesn't give you as much insight into Leah's life, which for a girl named Leah, I wanted to know. And now as a mother named Leah, it has a whole new meaning for me. Growing up, I wanted to be a godly woman. That was my role. I wanted to be a woman that pursued God and did the very best to represent him in the world around me. When I got married, I wanted to continue to be a godly woman and also be a godly wife, a woman that cared deeply for my husband and put his feelings and his needs above mine. And now that I'm a mom, I want to continue to be a godly woman. I want to continue continue to be a godly wife, but I want more than anything to be a godly mother, to be a mom that shows my children, child right now, what it means to love God and what it means to be filled with his love. So much so that you don't worry about your own needs. Instead, you focus on the needs of others. You don't worry about the petty things like, am I the prettiest? Was I invited to this? Do all of these people like me? Instead, you worry about God loves me. And everything else will figure itself out. God had a purpose for Leah in the Bible. And he has a purpose for you. I think when a 
woman becomes a mother, whether that's through adoption or giving birth or a foster mom, your role changes. You are no longer just looking out for yourself or looking out for yourself and a spouse. You are looking out for yourself and a child, no matter what their age. You worry about them constantly. Are they doing this right? Are they getting enough of this? Should I be doing more of this? Constantly. And that's not a bad thing. You're doing it because you love them so much that you want them to have the best life possible. I hope the story of Leah has given you a little bit of insight of what it means to be a mom. And you will never, never, never truly understand that until you are one or until you are a parent. But think about how much God loves us. And that will give you a taste of what it means to be a mom. Remember the story of Leah. How she went from being the last girl picked for anything to being the person that God was going to fulfill his promise through. That's huge. And that's what he did for each of us. I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful Thursday. I will see you tomorrow.